Good morning everyone, my name is Tracy Steen, personal fitness trainer here. And as you know, if you've been watching my YouTube channel that I post various videos on food and eating and all that good stuff, exercises and such. Well, about a year ago, I posted um, a video about my struggle with sugar. And I was quite honest in it and just basically said that, you know, every day I struggle with not eating copious amounts of sugar. And even though, you know, I'm relatively lean and I'm healthy and I'm um, in shape, you know, I exercise five to six days a week, which really helps with that. Um, all my meals are really relatively clean because I've got a good arsenal of recipes and health, you know, clean eating tips. And, and I know how to do all that. And of course, I tell all my clients how to do all that as well. And so, you know, technically, um, I should have that down pat. But as far as the sugar goes, I really don't to be honest. Anyway, so I posted this video about a year ago that said, um, you know, how I feel when I'm struggling with, with wanting to have sugar and how I get all tense and I'm not anxious really, but it's, uh, I guess it's the craving that's coming out. But um, anyway, so I just got a comment on this YouTube video yesterday that kind of pissed me off because it was a guy that just said, what you need to do is just eat more protein and then you won't have those cravings. And he goes, it's not that hard. Oh, it's really easy. Something like that. I'm like, really, dude, it's easy. So I hate that. You know, everyone's body is different. Everyone's struggle is different. Maybe you grew up um, having dessert every day after dinner or sugary sweets in your house all the time. I mean, I, I definitely had that. I don't know if we had dessert every day, but... I remember taking, you know, money from home every day to school and buying a big chocolate bar every single day. And then when I went to college, university, I had two a day, you know, just because I could. And so, you know, changing that for me is, is a constant battle, to be honest. Every day I think about it and I think, oh, I've got to restrict myself from that or I need to you know, begin to eat less of that because I know when I teach people this, it's the white poison it's, and it's the white stuff that kills you. You know, um, it's not healthy on any level and I get that. But anyway, what choked me was this guy's comment that said, I just need to eat more protein and then it'll go away. And by the way, dude, I do eat a lot of protein on account of the muscles. And so, and it still hasn't gone away because here's my thought. It goes a bit deeper than just a craving for sugar for me anyway. Um, for me, I like the taste in my mouth, okay? That brings me a sense of not euphoria necessarily, but joy. I feel happy in my heart when I get to have sugar or chocolate or baking. You know, um, it feels comforting, it feels soothing. So then my question has to be, why do I need or want or desire to feel those feelings right now? Why can't I be okay with not feeling it? Because oftentimes I'm not hungry. You know, if I'm hungry, I really do crave protein and, and natural foods and fruits and vegetables and that sort of thing. But if I'm feeling inadequate, um, what else? If I'm feeling bored or not enough, um, you know, I don't want to feel like that. So maybe, maybe it is I medicate to medicate those feelings. I eat to medicate. And sugar is just that instant, that sweet, I know, you know, chemically what it does inside the body just increases our serotonin and our endorphins and just instantly makes us feel better for those moments. But of course, what we know happens is that as our insulin spikes, very shortly after, it, it you know, it falls really quickly. It crashes and then we're left feeling inadequate, bored lonely, whatever, again. And so we need a little bit more because then it gives us that yummy taste in our mouth that tastes good, so now we feel good. So, dude on YouTube that says more protein, you can suck it because I eat a lot of protein, A. And B, what I really believe is that everyone's different. You can't judge anyone else's journey. You can't say, hey, eat this, eat that, do this, do that. Everyone's story is different and so much of our, our lives growing up and our our pains and our hurts and our brokenness, you know, come out in different aspects of our life. And for a lot of people who overeat or who struggle with food addictions, there is something going on inside that we 
A don't want to feel or B can't handle or that food really does comfort in in a moment. And so my challenge to me and to you is just to begin to find other things that can feel that comfort and to be mindful. Like when it happens, when I feel like, oh, I'm gonna grab for a chocolate bar, I'm not even hungry, but I would, I would love to have that. What's going on? What am I feeling? What do I want? What really, um, you know, is happening inside of me? Is it hunger? Is it just for sheer enjoyment of the food? And sometimes it is that for me because food is enjoyable. Like chocolate is delightful. I, I do enjoy it. But I know for me there's more of a psychosis around it. I know because it makes me feel, if I restrict, it makes me feel crazy. If I overindulge, then I have clarity about it later and then I feel guilty. Um, so, you know, there's a lot, a lot more going on than just eat more protein. So if you're struggling with, you know, eating sugar or being addicted to food too, hang in there. I, I get it. And I know I'm not, you know, overweight right now, but I, I guarantee that if I didn't exercise as much as I do, I probably would, would be. I need to, um, I need to get a handle on that a little bit more, especially the eating part, like the sugar part. Uh, like I said, the food is healthy and I love eating clean, you know, healthy meals and salads and all that. I think I developed a taste for that, a taste for salads without the yucky dressing and a, a taste even for coffee without sugar in it. So I know that I can develop a taste for, for things that aren't as sweet, but part of me doesn't want to, don't want to let it go. It's kind of like, I remember when I bit my nails. I bit them for about 40 years and I'm 41, so. <laughs> I've been clean from biting my nails for about 40 years, and, or one year rather. And, um, but every day I thought about it. So I stopped biting them and I had put fake nails on just to help me to stop. And when I took them off, I put my hands to my mouth every day for about six months. And I'm not even kidding, because I, I I was so aware of it, so conscious of it, and I wanted to bite them so bad. I just thought it was medicating for me, again, soothing. And after about six months, I didn't want to anymore. So isn't that interesting? Like, I know they say habits take six weeks to, to develop, but yeah, six months here, that was a bit longer. Anyway, hang in there. Um, we all have struggles, but just, you know, have more on days than off days. Have more times when you have compassion for yourself than you don't. And if you mess up, you know, there's always the next hour. I always tell my clients too, don't throw the whole baby out with the bathwater. So you have one, two, three mini chocolate bars from Halloween a couple weeks ago. Don't say, ah, oh, screw it, I'm gonna have the whole bag now. Don't do that. Stop where you are right now, be mindful, drink a big glass of water, and move forward. Anyway, I'll let you know how I'm doing with that struggle, because right now, yeah, it's a challenge, I'm not gonna lie. But I'm gonna be kind to myself in my head, because I just am. All right, take care.